Hi. And welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Earth. Good day. <laughs> welcome to the big show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mr. A, and uh, we got the last conic section that we're going to graph, which is a hyperbola, section 10.5 in the book. Now, if you look at the conic sections that we've seen so far, a hyperbola looks a lot like a parabola and sometimes gets confused for that, but it is not that, so make sure that you don't get those two confused. Again, looking here at a parabola, you can see that what has to happen is that plane cuts one cone at an angle that is parallel to the side of the cone. Okay, so you notice that the, the slope of this uh, plane matches the slope of the side of that cone, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Now, if you look at a hyperbola down here on the end, it's basically a plane that cuts both of those cones, and it is going to give us two curves, two hyperbolic curves. Here's your homework. Go ahead and pause it. Write that down. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I spy parabola, or no, parabola, lame. Hyperbola. Yeah, I see them right here. You can see this kind of hyperbolic curve on the side of this stack. Uh, someone asked me what that does, and I'm pretty sure it uh, spews toxic smoke into the environment so that we can kill our planet. So if you want to know, that's what it does. I'm really not sure what that is, but it looks pretty cool. <clears throat> These are really weird looking hyperboloidal gears. You can maybe look those up. I'm not mechanically inclined at all but it looks like it's supposed to transmit motion to a shaft that is basically like off axis or off center uh, where the shaft and like the drive shaft and the axle wouldn't intersect at 90 degrees like in a car. I probably said that all wrong, but whatever. And then a couple other parabolas or hyperbolas. I don't know why I'm stuck on parabolas today. <clears throat> Here's one and you can see that my drawing skills are about as good as my baseball skills. And there's another one down there. So that's what happens when you get this kind of old school lamp with the lampshade that's like a, a cylinder. Press it up against a wall and turn it on and you get those hyperbolas going. Now this is really weird. This is what happens to the back of a plane when it goes like really, really fast. <clears throat> and the, I read this online but I couldn't quite understand it. Something about the pressure near the rear of the plane creates this moisture and it forms this cloud that's almost in the perfect shape of a cone. And uh, so this is not a hyperbola, but it's a, uh, like a cone shape. Uh, either that or he's time traveling and he's coming back through our atmosphere to present day. One of those two things. Now this is actually a, a look at what happens when a plane will go really, really fast, maybe even faster than speed of sound. And sometimes you know that things travel so fast that they'll go by, then you hear, uh, you hear them going by or the noise that they make. And in this case, what happens is it uh, kind of spews out that sound in the shape of a cone. And where it intersects the ground, it sort of makes this hyperbolic shape where that sound hits the ground. So some little dude right here is going to hear it before some guy standing almost in the same spot a little bit further down. This, I hope that you guys can see this, that it's going to come through in the video. This is a video of a plane going by and creating that cloud. And as you can see, right when it gets in front of the people, he's hitting that optimum speed, so it creates that, that cloud, that cone. Yeah, right there. That's pretty cool. So I love that. That's like one of my favorite things. Uh, if I wasn't a teacher, then I'd definitely be like a fighter pilot. But I'm probably too big for the cockpit, so whatever. Okay, let's take a look at some graphs. If you notice, this is an equation of an ellipse. And we know that because it's equal to 1, we have that plus sign, and then we have two denominators. Now, if you look at the ellipse, then notice that the 4 and the 9, when we took the square root, gives us 2 and 3 and they're two and three units away from the center, respectively. Now, all I'm going to do is take that plus sign and change it to a minus sign. And you notice what happens is I get a hyperbola. So just by taking that plus sign, changing it to a minus sign, I get a hyperbola. Now, you might be asking, what happened to the two and the three? Well, here's the two. It gives us each a vertex. Here's my center again. 
Here's the vertex of each one. Now the three, if I were to go up three units and over two to kind of make the corners of a rectangle, and I know that this is not gonna show up right when I try to graph this so, or draw this straight, so my apologies, but it kind of gives me this rectangle that if, yeah, I know, keep my day job, right? I, I shouldn't quit my job to become a graphic designer or anything. If I go ahead and try to draw a line through that, through those diagonals, my apologies while I grab a ruler, then what happens is I get these two lines that are asymptotes. These are asymptotes for the hyperbola. So the hyperbola is not going to cross that line. Now I know that mine did right up here, but that's just because I'm horrible at this drawing straight line stuff. So anyway, keep that in mind. I'll show you an easier way to apply this than drawing that big old rectangle. We're just going to kind of use a slope to get that. And we'll get rid of all this drawing. Okay. Now here are the two together. And you notice that the ellipse and the hyperbola share this point here. And the ellipse would be completely contained in that rectangle that we just drew. So it's kind of kind of neat to look at. Now let's graph two hyperbolas together. Remember with an ellipse we have that plus sign. And with addition, when you change the order of things, it really doesn't matter. But with subtraction, like here, Like here with this minus sign, if I graph this one, I want you to watch what happens. We get this hyperbola. Now, again, I'll point out some of the, the key parts. Square root of 4 is 2 in either direction from the center. And look, this gives me the vertex. This hyperbola opens up in the x direction, and that's because the x happens first in the equation. Okay, keep that in mind. We won't talk about that one right now. Uh, now, what happens if I change the order, if I put the y first and the x second? Well, then I get this. And here, the square root of 1 is 1 in both the uh, up and down direction and the vertical direction away from the center. And that ends up being my vertex. And remember that this is going vertically because y happens first in the equation. So now watch what happens when I graph both of these together. Okay, and that's pretty cool looking. As you can see, this kind of forms uh, these hyperbolas around these asymptotes. And hopefully I can draw this correctly without messing this up too bad. If I draw in these asymptotes, either that or the computer's going to try and fix it for me like it always does. So I try to draw in those, those asymptotes, and what I want you to notice is the slope of the asymptote. If I go up one, over 2 away from the center, then I get basically the slope of the asymptote. And if I go up 1 and over 2 in the other direction, so basically think of up 1 and then in each direction 2 units, I get the slope of the asymptotes. Well, notice this, that if I take the square root of the denominator of y, so like the change in y, think, in ch think of slope, change in y divided by change in x, but what we're doing is taking the square root of the y squared denominator, divided by the square root of the x squared denominator, we get 1 over 2. And that was the exact slope that I had here, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. So that's how we're going to find that asymptote. And here's a quick look at both of these side by side, but not layered one on top of the other. Alrighty, so we'll pick this up in another video. See you then.